Nathan authorised. He just creates the impression that he consults with someone else at Marlin who makes the decision. Good afternoon, Mr. Marlin. How can you The woman on the phone is about £3,000 in debt. She was paying off £20 a month, but hasn't paid anything for about two years. She admits she owes the money, but says both she and her husband are on disability benefits. Because um, our solicitors have been speaking with us previously, they were looking to, to approach by the courts to see if they can get um, this, this paid either by um, a warrant of execution. What, what that is is where the county court bailiffs actually attend the residence of goods can be noted and valued sold at auction. Obviously, I'm trying to avoid that with you. So, if you could, can you not even get to say £100 as a down payment and we can review your account? What sort of figure do you think you may be able to get to? Yeah, I mean, what I can do, I can find out if we'll be able to do that, um, the 100, and call that. You know, We've asked Heather Keats, whose charity runs a chain of over 80 debt advisory centres, to view Tom's undercover footage and give us her professional opinion. Can I just see if I can get that authorised? Wait a second. OK. But he just puts her on hold. Have some of that, that's right, 100, quid a month. 100 pound down payment. So you'll get that on your stats, rather than 20 quid, I mean, 20 quid this year. Where's he going to get 100 quid from? People have money, man. We can get money with people. Tell her all the bad parts, to scare them a bit. No, so this is looking to apply for a warrant of execution in the county courts, because they can go around and take goods and sell it to make some money back in the account, because you're in arrears. However, I may be able to bring it down for you, make him sound like you're doing me a favour. Could you get the 100 quid? I'll see if we can get it authorised. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Job's good, really, isn't it? In order for them to get the money at a rate that she can afford, then there needs to be a lot more discussion rather than just plucking figures out of the air. When he's uh, suggesting that bailiffs go in, uh, they would have had to have had a county court judgment um, specifying instalments, and she would have had to have been in breach of those instalments for him to be able to um, send the bailiffs in. So I'm surprised that he hasn't mentioned that. In part two, we reveal more tricks of the debt collection trade. Half the time, I'm trying to hang on. Yeah. And I'm asking questions in order to, for them to hang themselves. Yeah. I'll just give them the rope. And the impact they can have in ordinary homes. I was losing sleep. It was affecting my work. It was affecting our relationship, causing general disruption to the family. Debt collectors are becoming a greater part of many of our lives. So what do they do to get you to pay up? Our reporter Tom Randall has been filming undercover as a debt collector with Marlin Financial Services. It's another morning at Marlin and my supervisor is using music to try and pump us up for a hard day of collections. As it says in the song, when the tough gets going, we've got to be strong. So today, we're to be pledged today. Hitting targets, that's what debt collection is all about. I'm supposed to collect £800, get the employment details of five debtors, and make at least 120 calls a day. And I get three minutes for toilet breaks. I'm soon back on the floor, learning more tactics. First one. For some people who don't pay, Marlin sends out letters in the name of a different company, which gives the impression that the matter has become more serious and the debt has been handed on to someone else. Rambo is what we use. It's, it's like a sister company, but it's the same company, it's the same thing. All these is Marlin, Marlin sent out letters, Marlin letters in the paper and stuff. If that doesn't work, then it goes through to Bramber, which is Bramber Debt Recovery. And it's all worded differently, it looks a little more scary, and it's, like it's now been passed to us for enforcement, it's just to sort of speed people on to pay. But we, we, we are Bramber, and we are Marlin as well. Mm. My name's Paul, and I'm from Bramber. Yeah, that's the bit I didn't really understand. Yeah, it's, just Why? A it's a pseudonym, in case. Yeah. Because you want to come across a different company. So. Heather Keats is concerned that this breaches the OFT guidelines. 
in terms of not uh, misrepresenting yourself, actually making it clear who you're working for. I mean, Section 2.2 spells out the um, unfair business practices. And so um, the idea of actually building separate companies and giving them separate names and actually sort of uh, passing the debt from one to another, whereas it's actually within the same environment, is very misleading. The next tactic, Marlin sends out a scary computer-generated letter to get people to phone in. Um, there's a letter called the 28 letter, which is threatening bankruptcy. So if they call in after the 28 has been sent, you know what you should be talking about. I mean, you should really be speaking. You can't make payments. We're looking to make you bankrupt because obviously you don't want to be bankrupt because they've called in. Mm -hmm. The Insolvency Act says that debt collectors need a county court judgment, known as a CCJ, or a statutory demand, before they can proceed to bankruptcy. But don't you have to have a CCJ before you can get bankruptcy or no, something? No, no, no. Bankruptcy is just... Is that different? It's not a county court thing, it's just... Um, it's just basically, I mean, all, like we said the other day, it's all threats and it's all like... We're looking to do this and stuff, but it's just... Well, it can happen, though, but obviously people don't have a package, so they're calling and trying to make a payment, really. It's interesting to seeing the tactics that they're using to... Uh, put pressure on and you can see the progression that they're prepared to take a case through but I think also it looks as if they are once again using the threat of bankruptcy to pressurise people into making some sort of payment or regular payments and not really saying yes we are going to it's more just a big stick. What you have to bear in mind is that the overwhelming majority of people who've got debt problems have got no idea about the legal procedure for collecting debt and no idea about their rights to resist any pressure from a debt collection agency. And so it's a game of trying to almost fool the debtor into believing that the debt collection agencies have got more powers and are going to go further than they actually will. Added to the billions of pounds of debt sold by the big banks and lenders to debt collectors during this recession are hundreds of millions of pounds of old debt going back many years. These debts are notoriously tricky to collect, often because the bank has lost contact with the debtor. So the easiest way to get these debts off their books is for the banks to sell them off. However, if the debt is more than six years old and the borrower hasn't been contacted, then it becomes statute barred, which means that the borrower can't be taken to court for the money. Even so, people are getting letters out of the blue from debt collection agencies they've never heard of, demanding payment in full for outstanding debts from years ago. This is Susan and David. He's a van driver. She looks after their daughter in their home outside London. It was really, really horrendous. I mean, at one point I thought, oh, what's the point in staying anymore? Because it got so bad. I was losing sleep, it was affecting my work, it was affecting our relationship. It was causing a lot of tension. We were ha I was coming home from work having arguments. It was just, it was just too, much, too much stress going on. <laughs> it was six months of hell. David and Susan had been carefully budgeting to be able to meet monthly instalments on some credit card debts. Then last November, out of the blue, David began receiving letters from Marlin, demanding payment for an outstanding car loan that David and his former partner had taken out over six years ago. It's been seven and a half thousand pounds. It's a lot of money. We can't just give it away to people. We would have been broke if we'd have started paying them. Marlin wanted David to acknowledge that the debt was his and demanded that he pay it in full. David actually phoned the company and they basically said, we want the money now, make a payment. Then we received a solicitor's letter, basically saying court proceedings will be instructed upon in spirit of this notice. But David and Susan took advice and discovered that Marlin had no record to show that David had anything to do with the loan for over six years. So the loan was statute barred and Marlin couldn't take David to court. 
on the 21st of April 2009, they actually sent us a letter saying that they, there is actually statute barred and the account is now closed and they won't be pursuing David for it anymore. If we'd have made a payment of a penny, they, they would have sent us a letter saying we're taking you to court and they legally could take you to court for that money. Marlin told us they were not prevented from asking for the debt to be repaid once it became statute barred. However, prior to notice of this programme, they had changed their processes to ensure such issues are treated with priority. My training at Marlin continues. Today, the head of collections takes over one of my calls to show me how it's really done. On the phone is a woman who took out a loan years ago with her ex-partner. Rather than getting involved in the emotional side of this, let's deal with facts. Um, I'm, I'm happy to split this balance exactly down the middle, so you both half half a liability each. And I, I can assure you, I will be contacting your ex-partner just as readily as I've been contacting you. I, I don't know. What, what address do you have for him? When you get a chance. I'll try and give you a call back later, David. You don't have a contact number or anything like that for him, do you? Give us a call back when you have more time to call. I'm not going to tell him where I've got his mobile number from. I wouldn't do that to you. I want to keep you, I want to help you here. Okay. I might get another call. He succeeded and paid the woman back. Okay, thank you. 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 You get married in six weeks. Cool. Um, Good luck. What, what about if we were to do two hundred a month? A hundred a month. So you work part time and you get family credit. What about your new husband to be? What would he, would he be better? No, 